Can I get into the word? Yes. Yes, look left, look right, smile at somebody and say the word is for me. Come on, the word is for me. Hallelujah. All right, I'm reading from the book of Psalms 34, and that's the promise verse for the month of November. If somebody would read verse 19, verse 19, Psalm 34, verse 19. Well, if somebody would read, would probably me, be me. So let me just read it out for you. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. How many of you know this by heart? Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Come on, one more time. Many are the afflictions of the righteous many how many many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivereth him out of them all amen hallelujah all right one more verse which i'd like you to read is the 10th verse of the same chapter and again this is a verse we should know which is a beautiful verse it says that the young lions do lack and suffer hunger who the young lions do lack and they suffer hunger but they that seek the lord shall not want any good thing can we read this one more time together please one two and three let's go do and suffer hunger but they that seek the lord shall not want any good thing hallelujah so 19 says and many are the afflictions of the righteous okay now i want you to ask yourself how do you know that you are righteous Come on, how do you know that you are a righteous person? Right? Is it because of the blood of Jesus or is it because of the many afflictions that are coming our way? The answer is because of the many afflictions that are coming our way. So the more you're walking in righteousness, I've got bad news for you. Many are the, right, many are the afflictions that are coming our way. And when the afflictions are coming your way, do not run away from the affliction. In fact, wel welcome the affliction because what happens is the, 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 uh, the afflictions are working something powerful in our lives. So all the things which are causing a delay, every problem which is going wrong in your life, all right, all these things are working together for those who love God. Amen. And those who love God said amen with their right hand stretched out. Amen. Yes. All right. Because that's the righteous people. The righteous people have an issue. And the issue is what? There is problem after problem after problem. And more the problem, the more that the righteousness in you is being restored and governed and twisted and turned and is building your character up. Amen. So it's such a powerful thing. So what happens is Paul was absolutely so, you know, so he wanted all his people uh, the Israelites to be saved from their sins, all right? He was so eager, uh, but, but, but what happened was the people of Israel really did not understand what the laws and the commandments were about. So the Israelites thought that if they kind of kept following a particular kind of laws to the T, there would be no problem. They would find their way to heaven. And that's where legalism and religiosity started, all right? So that's where we need to learn to come out of because that is not what God was trying to teach us. That is not what Jesus was trying to teach us. So in the part one of the cross of Jesus Christ, there is a part one and then there is a part two. Many of us don't understand part one and therefore we don't go into part two. So today I want to just make this very clear to you and hopefully you will be able to understand part one and part two. But let me explain this very soon so that you will be able to understand the finished work of the cross and receive and accept the finished work of the cross. So how many of you here have accepted the finished work of the cross? All right, let me ask you, what is the finished work of the cross? What is it that you've accepted? Tetanus, what? Jesus is the Savior. We are washed by the blood. Huh? We are not under the curse. There's no more condemnation. What else? Come on, talk to me. We have eternal life. All right. All this is right, but let me go on and show you something else because every one of you missed something else. You all missed talking about righteousness. Why is it that we forgot to talk about righteousness? The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The Bible says we are God's righteousness on earth. All right. So what happens is unless we understand righteousness, there is going to be an issue. But for us to understand righteousness, let me just quickly make a, a, a very interesting example here. So what I do have here with me uh, is, uh, is, 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 is a lovely looking 500 rupee note. Amen. So... It used to be gray in color, now it's a slightly green color with a gray color and a khaki and whatever else. And then it has security features on it. So if you look carefully, you can see the, uh, what are these things called? There's a hologram on it and then uh, this, 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 
what is this thing called? Yeah, there's this line here across, I forget. Uh, like a barcode or something or the other. And then if I look at it in the light, I can see Mr. Gandhiji's head uh, 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 on the side. And uh, if you turn it this way or turn it this way or you fold it, there are so many different ways to understand that this is an authentic currency. So with 500 bucks, I can buy a lot of things. Yes or no, all right? It is, it is backed by the government as well, all right? So now Debbie is a smart girl. So I, what I do is I take this 500 bucks and I give it to Debbie. Now, Debbie, as soon as she gets this 500 bucks, she is happy, she's full of joy, she's full of victory, and she's so blessed, and she's, she's just doing her thing. I don't know what she's doing. Oh, but she's really, really, really happy. I don't know. She's so happy that what she does is she goes to her friends and she talks about the, 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 that, that, that money, she talks about the security features, and she's blessed, and she just kind of gives it away. And what is amazing here is that the minute she gives it away, she gets some more, and then her joy is even more, and she looks at it, and she's again so happy with it, and she's trying to figure out what she should do. She goes to another friend, and she gives, gives it away, and then there's a very strange thing happening because every time she kind of gives it away, there is a little bit more of it coming. <laughs> oh, and now some one of her friends called Biju who got that money, he saw it and he's now smiling and he's given it away to somebody else. And then what happens is there is some more coming because she's been able to give it away. All right. And, and, and all this is just happening. All right. Just for us to know, I gave out six notes. I want all my six notes back. <laughs> Actually, I didn't give out six notes. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. So what happens is, put them together and give it to me. Just don't give it to me. Now, so what happens is, she was just so happy. She was enjoying this and she was just giving it. Now I have another friend here and I've taken the same beautiful note with all the same security features which is backed by the government and I give it to him. Now he looks at it. Why don't you stand up? He looks at it. He just stares at it. He looks at it. He puts it away. And then what he does is he takes a piece of paper, gets a scissor and Instead of using it, he's now cutting a piece of paper and he's amazing. <laughs> and he's got this piece of paper and now he's trying a piece of pen and a crayon and he's trying to match the colors and he's doing all this hard work and he writes 500 on it. And every one of you know that this is a, is a counterfeit. Now he takes his counterfeit and he goes to the shopkeeper who's selling chocolates. The shopkeeper takes it, looks at it, and what does the shopkeeper do? <laughs> this is not so smart. <laughs> What, what will this guy do? What will the shopkeeper do? He will catch him and he will throw him behind bars. Why? Because he's got something that is counterfeit. It is illegal. And what happens is it is not backed by the government. Amen. Did you get this? Put your hands together for the two of them, please. All right. Come on. If you're going to clap hands, clap well. Biju, I saw the 500 in your pocket. It has to come back to me. <laughs> all right. So did you understand this here? All right. Now, see, all these things are what we are doing. All right. So now she's got the money. She's so happy. She's just walking from place to place. And she's just giving away. And the Lord begins to pour in more and more when she begins to give away. But the other person here, he's got what God has given him as well. But instead of using it, what does the person do? He tries to imitate it. He tries to take a piece of paper and tries to make out his own righteousness. He's trying to work out his own salvation. What happens is you've got to learn to stop. Because I'm talking about part one. I'm talking about the finished work on the cross because on the cross Jesus Christ finished everything for you he completed you and there is nothing you can go beyond and try and achieve you cannot walk in further holiness than what has already been completed but this is where the misconception happens all right so now I want you to see what uh, uh, Romans was is talking about what, what Paul is talking about in the book of Romans and we're going to the book of Romans chapter 10 and we're reading from verse 1 we will read the whole chapter and I have the passion translation here with me so that you guys can understand it better 
So, chapter 10 of the book of Romans, and we are reading verse 1. Come on, where are we? Right, my beloved brothers and sisters. Come on, say that with me. You, you, you guys can leave your Bibles down. You can just follow the screen because you can go back and, uh, uh, and read the thing. You know what is very interesting? All right, those who know Tamil, your Tamil translation and the Passion translation is almost word for word. It is just amazing, just amazing, all right? So Romans 10 verse 1, it says, My beloved brothers and sisters. All right, so when I'm reading, please read with me. My beloved brothers and sisters. All right, who is he addressing it to? He's addressing it to his church. He's talking to the people in a church, right? And he's saying, my beloved brothers and sisters, the passionate desire of... You're supposed to read with me. The passionate desire of my heart and constant prayer to God is for my fellow Israelites. Come on, read, read. To experience salvation. Right, so who is he speaking to? What is he speaking about? He's speaking about salvation in a church to the body of Christ. And these are people who are already born again. Yes or no? These are people who have already received Christ. Yes or no? And yet he's giving them something more. All right? And verse 2 he says, For I know that although they are deeply devoted to God are you supposed to be reading with me come on <coughs> that although they are deeply devoted to God they are unenlightened cause stop who is he talking to he is talking to the word to the body of Christ in a church who are born again and he says guys there is a problem even though you are born again you have not understood you have not received enlightenment about what the salvation I'm talking about is this is clear so far exactly the same word for word in Tamil as well all right so my passion my, my and, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Wait for me to go, right? So my beloved brothers and sisters, the passionate, what, what desire? It's a passion in this guy for them, for him to, for, 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 for Paul to reveal to them something more than what is already received, okay? So now let's go to verse 3 and let us read verse 3, please. <coughs> and since they've ignored the righteousness God gives us I'm sorry I'm sorry what since since what 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 are we doing since they've ignored the righteousness God gives us so has God given righteousness to you yes what have you done with it See, that's the problem. It has been ignored. It's like uh, Rohania. Well, he's got the 500. What has he done? He's ignored it. And what is he trying to do now with that? He's now taken a piece of paper and he's trying to make a counterfeit. This is what you and I are, are doing wrong in our lives. What are we supposed to do? When you have been blessed with salvation, enjoy the salvation. Because when Jesus finished the work on the cross, you have got the fullness of peace. Say that with me. You've got the fullness of joy. Say that with me. Come on, you've got the fullness of victory. Say that with me. You've got the fullness of health and healing. You've got the fullness of everything. But what it is, is we put that aside and then we try to create something which is not. We try to wear white and white, put oil on our head, and we try to look pious and holy when it is a fake thing. It is a counterfeit thing. And we talk in all humility. You know how we talk in humility, right? The most holier than thou people, when they speak in humility, they... Reduce their voice. You can barely hear them. And that's holiness. Did you know how holy I am? The lesser I roam my voice, the holier I am. You know how difficult it is to speak so low. I, I would love to slap some people on that. Why? It is not the right thing to do because it is a fake holiness. Look at the fake next to you. Look at the fake next to you. Because everyone here is a fake. You know why? Because you've not understood. The Bible says you've not understood it. You see, that is why many of the Christians here are not happy. How, there, there are more people in the world who are much happier singing your favorite song. What is that? Take it easy policy. You know, I love that song. It's a nice song. Wouldn't you like to just stretch out and sit back? Yeah, it's a good song, right? But see, what I'm trying to say is there are people outside on the earth, all right, who are non-Christians who are living a better life than Christians. Why is it that we have this fake facade? Why is it that we are not genuinely happy? Right? That's why I'm saying, look at the fake next to you. Look at the counterfeit next to you. That's where all of us have a problem. You see, the Bible says the joy of the Lord. See the way you said it? 
You see, what you, see, you, you can see it in the way you say it. You can see it in the energy coming out. You can see it because you've not received the enlightenment. That's where the problem starts. And I will show you what Paul is trying to show everybody here. Now read this. For I know, verse 2. <coughs> For I know that although they are deeply devoted to God. Who? I know that FIC is de- deeply devoted to God. They are unenlightened all right and since they've ignored the righteousness god gives wanting instead to be acceptable to god because of their own works they have refused to submit to god's faith righteousness listen every one of us does wrong yes or no and then we beat ourselves upon it yes we shout, we say things, things which we shouldn't, and then we are feeling so bad, we are feeling so miserable, and what happens is we don't even come to church. Why? Why? Because we are feeling miserable. Let me ask you something. Did God make that criterion for you? He said no. He said you are complete. Did he say that in Colossians chapter 2? He says you are complete. He says you are perfect. You are, com- you are finished. You are done. So then what is the issue? You see, you have not received the first part of God's work. Remember, I told you there are two parts. You have not received the first part of God's work. You are complete in Him. That's why He says, let's move on to perfection. Let us put aside everything else and let us move on to something bigger and better. All right? No, but we forget. Now, you see what uh, Debbie was doing? She was just going around freely giving what she freely received. This guy was trying to make something out of nothing and trying to give it away which nobody wanted. That is why many of you are not a carrier of the gospel. See, because you've not understood the essence of what Jesus is trying to say. You've received something free. Give it free. There should be joy. You see, when Tamil uh, characters uh, are not so long, right? Nobody will come to come to you if you have what is called as a. So you have to be able to show Christ. You can only show Christ if you live Christ. For you to live Christ, you need to have a revelation of Christ. If you don't have a revelation of Christ, you're following a religion. What is religion? It is Christ, it's a Christ followers without Christ. What are you guys doing? Counterfeits are the real thing. That's where the question is this morning. All right, let me show you something very interesting here. Which verse am I on? Let me read verse 3, all right? And since they've ignored the righteousness of God, the righteousness that God gives, wanting instead to be acceptable to God because of their own works. They refuse to submit to God's faith righteousness. Please note, trying to be good, trying to do good things will not get you to heaven. Will not get you to heaven. Let me, let me, do you want me to say it in any other language? Trying to be a good person will not get you to heaven because the work has been completed on the cross. Uh, I hope it registers to some of you here this morning. All right. They have submitted to God's faith righteousness. Verse 4. For the Christ is the end of the law. And because of him, God has transferred his perfect righteousness to all who believe. Amen. You all didn't get this yet. To slap somebody on the back of their head and say, you didn't get it. Ah. Look, can you please read this verse again? Come on, verse verse 4, verse 4, right? Come on. For Christ, for Christ is the end of the Lord. Part 1, over. He is the end. He fulfilled, right? And in the fulfillment, he gave us his what? His righteousness. So you cannot go and achieve righteousness. You can wear white and white. You've not become righteous. You can go to church for the rest of your life and say, Oh, I went to church every day and be legalistic about it. You've not achieved righteousness. You understand? So what is he saying? For Christ is the end of the law and because of him, God has what? Has, God has what? Come on, you didn't get this. God has what? You didn't get this. All right. God has what? God has transferred his perfect. So right now I am transferring mine to him. What is his job? What's his job? Believe and receive. What's his job? Anything in the Bible is based on this. Believe and receive. Believe and receive. Say it with me. Believe and receive. Now, I also believe. 
Thank you. If I not, I will not get it back. <laughs> All right. I'm a smart fellow. All right. So watch this. Okay. So what's for? For can can all of us read it together? For the Christ. It does not say Jesus. It does not say Jesus. Jesus is the man. Christ is the God. Please watch this. And and for the Christ is the end of the law. Go on. To all who believe. So what is the key? Thank you. Thank you. We are getting somewhere here. All right. Please read verse 5 and we just go on. Okay. 5, 6 and all not as important but let me read. Moses wrote long time ago about the need to obey every part of the law in order to be declared right with God. The one who obeys these things must always live by them. But we receive the faith righteousness that speaks an entirely different message. What did we receive? We received faith righteousness that speaks an entirely different message. An entirely different message message the earlier message was if you don't do this you'll be killed you got to do this 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 burn so many candles break these eggs break these watermelons break these uh, whatever pumpkins only then these things happens now he's saying all that's over a new message is coming in so watch this don't for a moment think that you need to climb into the heavens to find messiah and bring him down or descend to the underworld to bring him up from the dead but the faith righteousness we receive speaks to us in these words of moses god's living message is very close to you as close as your own heart beating in your chest and as near as the tongue in your mouth what is close to you the message of what God has for you and I. How close is it? Is it? Absolutely close. All right. Now watch this. Verse 9. I want complete attention here. I'll be there in verse 9. All right. Now watch this. And what is God's living message? It is the revelation of faith for salvation. Stop. It is the revelation of it is the revelation of it is not the revelation of salvation it is the revelation of faith for salvation you have not got the revelation of salvation you're getting the revelation of faith to believe in salvation no you didn't get this understand this again read this again it is the revelation of faith for salvation it is not the revelation of salvation it is a revelation of belief to believe in salvation salvation is always there god has given you a revelation to believe it that's it you understand now so when you're born again what did you do you believed you didn't get a revelation of salvation you believed. when you believed what did you get you got salvation what was salvation it's the person of jesus christ you understand so what did god give you he gave you a revelation of faith of belief all right you get this so far wow you guys are smart brilliant 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 all right now i thought i might have a problem trying to make you understand this verse 9 and what is god's living message it is the revelation of faith for salvation which is the message that we preach for if you publicly declare with your mouth that jesus is lord and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you will experience salvation amen amen so what is the revelation you've got your revelation which you have received is a revelation to believe all right and that's why everywhere in the bible new testament says believe 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 if you believe the mountain will boo if you believe this tree will die if you believe 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 yes or no got this so far all right now please 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 read verse 10 together with me the heart that believes in him receives the gift of righteousness the gift of righteousness has been received so he and she and he and dr j and asha and everybody here you are the righteousness of christ whether you like it or not and you know what you can never receive it you can never make it by yourself it is just received by one simple act by what by belief do you understand what i'm saying all right i believe i will get my money back thank you <laughs> all right now watch this watch this interesting so far you guys learned yes you know what this is only part one all right now 
And then the mouth gives thanks to salvation. For the scripture encourages us with these words. Everybody who believes in him will never be disappointed or ashamed. Okay? Now, pay attention. So then faith eliminates the distinction between Jew and non-Jew. For he is the same Lord Jehovah for all people. And he has enough treasures to lavish generously upon all who call. I'm sorry, what was the standard? Lavish generously upon all who call. All right? Lavish generously upon all who call. I love that. All who call. What's the criterion? What is the criterion? Okay, before you call, what's your criterion? There you go. That's why when that man who had a son who could not be healed, all right? And Jesus said, believe. What did that man's man statement was? He said, Lord, help thou my unbelief. You understand? Help thou my unbelief. Every time I tell you to go and fast, I'll tell you to fast for one reason. What is that one reason? To believe, right? See, an affliction comes for you, all right? And the Lord God causes you to walk in righteousness because of his grace so that he can heal you and so solve the problem. So when you overcome a problem, your belief has gone up. You understand? Tomorrow when you have that problem, you just laugh it away. Why? Because you have the belief structure in place. Amen? The same way, every problem is nothing but a builder of your belief system. Say that with me. Every problem is a builder of my belief system. All right? Why? You overcome in the name of Jesus. You see the answer. You're blessed. Whoa! What happens is faith is flowing out. Why? You have overcome. And what is the next level right now? The next level is what? You have overcome because of your revelation of belief. Why? Because that same belief is what you got for salvation of your soul. Are you with me so far? Yes. Interesting. Yes. No. Yes. Which verse are we on? Right, so then, uh, and he has enough treasures to lavish generous, generously upon all who call upon him. And it is true, everyone who calls in the name of the Lord Yahweh will be rescued and experience new life. All right, but now let me just uh, uh, avoid that and let, just, let me go to verse 17 because running short of time. Verse 17, if we are there. And I'd like all of us to read verse 17. Faith then is birthed in a heart that responds to God's anointed utterances of the anointed one. Wait, how does faith come? The King James says, uh, faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Now it's the same thing here. Faith then is burst in a heart. Now there's the key. That responds to God's anointed word. Yes or no? The question is this. Are you responding to the word of God? The answer is no. This is the issue. Because 20 years ago when you received Christ, you had a problem with anger. 20 years later, you still have a problem with anger. Why? You have not responded to the word of God. You know, 20 years ago when you were born again, you had a problem with lust. Even now, you have a problem with lust. Why? You have not responded to the word. Now, this is the issue. You see, belief without response uh, to, to, to that belief is not going to get you a result. See, that is where our problems as the body of Christ start. 20, 30, 40 year old Christians who are still the same, or in fact actually downgraded from that period of time. Why is that happening? Because the revelation of salvation has not come upon them. You don't get this. Revelation of salvation is Jesus Christ. He's revealing himself to you. But you need to believe. The revelation you got was not revelation of salvation, was a, religion, was a revelation of a belief system to believe in Jesus Christ. Did you get this? You, you get knowledge to get a degree certificate. That's what he's trying to say. You get your knowledge. That's what he's trying to say. Get your knowledge. All right. Are you with me so far? Yes, so far. All right. So now, so some, so some people are trying to get to heaven on their own by being a good person. The only righteousness that is real is what the Lord Jesus Christ gives you and I. And he's given it to you on the cross. Have you received it? The answer is yes, you've received it, but you've not understood it. All right? Now that was part one. Now we go to part two. All right? Can I have a dupada? Can I have your dupada, please? All right? Now let's say this dupada signifies the, 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 the righteousness of Christ. Now this has been given to this young man. Now he can choose to receive it or he chooses not to 
receive it. All right? It is his entire choice. Are you there with me so far? All right. So now we're going to the second part. All right? Say part two, somebody. Matthew 22, verse 8. Matthew 22, verse 8. This is interesting so far. Are you guys learning something? Yes. Matthew 22, verse 8 says, Then the king said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready. So here we are. We're coming to the wedding feast. All right? Yet those who had been invited to attend didn't deserve the honor. Whoa. Whoa. They didn't deserve the honor. What was it? They didn't deserve the... They were invited, but they didn't deserve it. Okay? Now, the king is telling them, Now, I want you to go into the streets and the alleyways and invite anyone and everyone you find to come and enjoy the wedding feast in honor of my son. Whose wedding? So the servant went out into the city, city streets, and invited everyone to come to the wedding feast. Good and bad alike. Until the banquet hall was crammed with people. Come on, are we ready? Verse 11. Come in, can all of you read? He looked with glee over all. I love that part. He looked with glee over all his guests. Wait, when, when Debbie got that first finder, you should have seen that look of glee on her face. Amen. All right. Now, he looked with glee upon over all his guests. Now, but then he noticed a guest who was not wearing the wedding robe. Sorry, what? Provided for him. So he, so he said, my my what does he address him friend. freaks me out he calls you friend even though you're not prepared right so don't be happy about just being saying oh I'm a friend of God yeah you got to be in the right state so he said my friend how is it that you're here and you're not wearing your wedding garment but the man was speechless that was a repercussion then the king turned to his servant and said tie him up and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be great sorrow and with weeping and grinding of teeth now verse 14 pay attention for everyone is invited to enter but few respond in excellence but few respond in excellence how is your demeanor when you come to the house of god are you sleeping are you tired is your response in excellence or is it mediocre or way below average when worship was going on how was your response below average mediocre or excellent because every sunday the lord's watching you to see what you're doing every moment of your life he's watching you See, your character and your righteousness is tested when nobody's watching you. Not when you're in public. What was this guy's problem? So I'm the servant of God. I've got the robes of righteousness, scarlet in color, with the signifying the color of Jesus. I find this man in the street and I give it to him and I say, Hey, buddy, come. There is a garment, there is a wedding feast, all right? And you will be honored there because you, I have invited you because my king has told me to come to bring you into, my, into his kingdom, all right? So what you do, you wear your clothes, okay? And you come. Now, this guy, what he does? He doesn't put on the garment. You know why? Watch this. He's very comfortable in what he is wearing, this is the problem with the 20, 30, 40 year old Christians. They are set in their ways. They are not interested to change. Do you understand what I am saying? Sit down my friend. Let me give you an example. So I wanted to buy a, a second hand car. So I saw this lovely ad in the paper. Found the address and I went to see this lovely red car which I was going to buy. What car? The advertiser has said, very good condition, good paint job, well maintained, so on and so forth. So when I go to buy the car, 
I see that the car is covered, is covered nicely in this lovely red car cover. So when I see it, I'm even the more excited. So when I go there, I pull the sheets off. And I see that the headlight is broken. I see that the tail light is broken. I see there's lots of bumps. I see lots of scratches. I see the paint job has a problem. I see there's a lot of issues to the car. I see one tire is punctured. So I'm disappointed and I walk away. What am I referring to? I'm referring to Christians who have not bothered to change. And God the Father on judgment day comes to you. What he sees is the blood of Jesus Christ. He sees the garment of righteousness. Now he takes it off because why? It is judgment day. He takes it off. And now he's looking at the person. And when he sees the person, he's judging him against whom? His son, Jesus Christ. And he sees the broken headlights and the broken taillights. And he sees the scratches and the bumps and the bad paint job and the rust patches. And he looks at his son made perfect. And he says, this one has not reached its value. And he walks away. Who am I talking about? Talking about the body of Christ today. I'm asking you, when you have recognized a fault and a problem, what are you doing about it? You cannot avoid it. You cannot hide it under the carpet. You have to deal with it. My question is, when are you going to deal with it? Because if you are not going to deal with it, you are deceiving your own life. Please think with me. How many here in this room have a problem with anger? Put your hand up nice and high. How many years have you had this problem with anger? Sit down, Rohan. How many years have you had this problem with anger? 20 years, 30 years? Right? When Christ, when God the Father lifts the veil up and looks inside, What's he going to see? Listen to me, church. Don't think I'm talking, talking through my head. Don't think I'm talking nonsense. There are something which is so important, and the, this important thing is that we must be like Christ, yes or no. My question is this. God has given you 75 years to deal with the weaknesses in your soul, and he's given you the Holy Spirit to break through these barriers for you. The Holy Spirit is not here for your financial needs and promotions and this and that. All right? He's not here to help you just make a decision to go in the right direction. He's here to make you like Christ. When you see you have a problem, don't hide it under the carpet. Address it. Deal with it. Work on it. Allow the Holy Spirit to destroy that barrier, the root cause, and then change. Because the price you pay is a little too hard, a little too heavy. This man who went for the wedding, it was an honor for him to be at the wedding. Unfortunately, he was not willing to change. And I have seen Christians over Christians over Christians. 20, 30, 40 year old Christians who think they know the word because they know Psalm 23. And I will tell you, just because you know Psalm 23 or Psalm 291 does not mean you know the word. You need to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit every day. You see, because that's whom changes. Money will come, money will go, increase will come, family will come, family will go. But friend, it's only Christ who stays with you. So I want you to understand that unless you begin to change, nothing will happen. Let me leave you with this. In the book of James chapter 1, Verse 21 and 22. I will read this again from the Passion Translation. All of you know this in 
King James. King James says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. Let us read this in the Passion. Can we do this? So this is why. Come on, all of us. This is why. Pay attention, yeah? This is why we abandon everything morally impure, Read, read. And all forms of wicked conduct. All forms of wicked conduct. That means you open your mouth and say something wrong. It is what? It is wicked conduct. All right? Instead, with a sensitive spirit, we absorb God's word, which has already, it's already inside, has been implanted within our nature. For the word of life has power to you see, without the word, you can never get out of a problem. You can never break through in worship. You need the word. But the precursor to the breakthrough is the worship that you need. The worship sets you right, and then boom, the Rima word comes in, the revelation comes in, and you break out, and you break through. Continually deliver us. Right? Can we read this one more time, please? Go ahead. One, two, three, go. Verse 22. I love that last part. So don't just listen to the word of truth and not respond to it. Do you know we never respond to the word? Do you know that? We sit, we listen, right? Then Monday morning we go listen to Joel Osteen and we feel so good. What? What have you changed? Nothing. What's the point of being a Christian if nothing has changed? Please wake up because you need a revelation of salvation. All right? Don't just listen to the word of truth and not respond to it for that is the essence of this is the saddest thing the body of Christ who makes who goes to heaven are self deceiving themselves so always let his word become like poetry written and fulfilled by your life there's a Chinese proverb it goes like this where there is righteousness in the heart, there is beauty in the character. Yes or no? Where there is righteousness in the heart, there is beauty in the character. Where there is beauty in the character, there is harmony in the home. When there is harmony in the home, there is order in the nation. When there is order in the nation, there is peace in the world. Such a powerful, powerful thing. But you know what it starts with? Righteousness. And you know what Jesus has given you and I? Enough and more righteousness. Stop trying to be holy. Stop trying to create. Stop trying to do the right things. You are already in the right path. Don't get deviated here and there. The word of God is yours. It is power. It is life. It is the breakthrough for everything. It is the answer for everything. Right? Let it start in your heart. Let it permeate into your life, into your family. And everything goes on well. Let's